Tanse, Oki, bonjour everybody. How is everyone doing today? Uh, I hope you are well wherever you are. Um, and I wanted to welcome everybody to another Tuesday Teachings. I did start a little bit later today and it's because I needed to update a few things uh, with the live stream. Um, I will be um, putting together an event in the next couple of days for uh, the International Day of Indigenous Peoples, which is on August 9th. And this year it is more important than ever that we really step up uh, as Indigenous people and as non-Indigenous people, because um, we're all Indigenous to somewhere. And I think it's really, really important to just recognize where our roots are and recognize how deeply connected we are to the earth. Um, and right now there are huge struggles going on um, across Turtle Island, across the world. Um, especially here. Of course, we've been always on the front lines. Indigenous people have always been on the front lines of colonialism. Um, I mean, we're seeing some stark truths come forward with the discovery of our children, of our family members. Um, not only that, but also uh, we have been on the front lines warning people uh, for generations about the devastation that's happening to Mother Earth. And we're starting to start to really feel the ramifications in a big way. Mother Earth is not happy with us. And as Indigenous people, we are the stewards of Mother Earth. We're the ones who are her voice because some people can't hear the way that uh, some Indigenous elders and ancestors and knowledge keepers can. And so this is why it's super important that we, um, you know, stand tall and we stand strong and we voice the concerns of, you know, all of our relations. Like, I mean, the standing people, the trees, the, um, in, there's a block happening uh, with Berry Creek uh, trying to defend the old growth forests. These are trees that have been, you know, there for time and memoriam. They've been there for thousands and thousands of years and they have so many stories and they have such an important role to play with, uh, you know, all of our air and with uh, the way that the water is regulated, with everything, with the way that the land and the animals are regulated up there. And to think that we could just take them away for, you know, furniture or housewares, it just, it boggles my mind um, <laughs> that we could be so short-sighted. Uh, also, of course, with the oil sand, I mean, this has been going on for years and years and years, and the Athabasca is sick. It's not the same river anymore. We have um, so much devastation to the plants and the animals and the forests out there. All of the lakes are sick. Um, the, the air was sick. I went up there, and I could not believe the changes. So I remember going up there to, um, you know, go hunting and fishing with my dad when I was younger. Uh, and to go there and just not hear the birds, not hear the bugs, not you know, be attacked by bugs, but have this overwhelming smell of, you know, gasoline. It was just, it was horrible. It hurt my heart to be up there. Um, and even down south uh, here in Alberta, um, I mean, there's fracking happening all over the place and it's starting to really uh, seep into the water table and we're starting to really notice that with some of our plants and the animals and some of our traditional medicines just aren't growing back the way that they should or in the places that they should. And so these are some things we need to be aware of. But that's just here. That's just in Alberta alone and in BC alone. That's not taking into account some of the mining that's happening up in the Northwest Territories and none of it in the Yukon and just how sick it's making those things. But how there's chemicals just being blown around the world and they're impacting people that have nothing to do with, you know, that extraction. Um, it's really, really important that we need to stand up and we need to stand up for those things um, and for all people for all of our future generations because we're trying to live infinitely in a finite planet and it's not working. I mean, it's very obvious that it's not working with just how um, the storms are ramping up, how the fires are ramping up, um, how <laughs> the droughts are wrapping up in one area and then we're seeing extreme flooding in another area that has never been flooded before. So, I mean, I don't know what we need to do to open our eyes and actually see what's happening and the changes that we have to implement. Um, but we need to, you know, the powers that be aren't going to do it for us. So the people need to step into their power, which I think is so, so important because we're the ones that are making their decisions for all of our future generations. Um, also with uh, August 9th, um, I'll be uh, creating an event and specifically we're going to be supporting Brazil. So Brazil is on the front lines of, you know, uh, of course they've had environmental devastation and, you know, uh, all of these laws that have kind of been pushed through. Um, but 
essentially the the First Nations people, the indigenous people of Australia, of um, Brazil are are on the front lines. And right now they're trying to take away all of their rights. There's um, a bill going through the Brazilian parliament that is trying to take away indigenous rights. And that's a slippery slope because not only will that affect indigenous people in Brazil, but they're going to look at that legislation and they're going to start implementing it across the board in any country where there is an Indian problem. And so we need to start addressing this as a whole, as one nation, which we all are, which, you know, that's, <laughs> that's our human nation. We have to come together and we have to stand up for these things and we have to stand up for Mother Earth. And I mean, the First Nations people were the ones leading the charge on defending Mother Earth because she's part of us and we're part of her and we understand those teachings. We remember those teachings because we're not separated from those teachings from colonization, from moving from place to place to place. And I think this is why people are so drawn to indigenous teachings and indigenous knowledge is because it's that reminder, it's that reminder of who we are at our core, how deeply connected we are to wherever we come from on Mother Earth. We have that connection, we remember it in our core, we remember it through our ancestors, through our blood and our flesh and our bodies, through our being, through our sacred breath, whenever we take a deep breath, we remember and we need to continue to remember and so this is why it is so so important to step up and to honor the voices of all indigenous people as leaders of the fight for mother earth because this is exactly what we need to do now or else we're not going to have much of a mother earth left and i don't know about you but i like my future generations i want to be able to leave a good world for them and so um before I start anything, I always like to acknowledge the land upon which we stand because it's it's important to know where we are, to know where we're going, but also to really acknowledge what their ancestors have done for us and um, just how beautiful this land is, how deeply connected we are to it and how deeply connected we are to each other. A land acknowledgement is acknowledging the relationship that we have to the land itself and to each other. And so um, I am in Treaty 7 territory. I'm in Mokinstis. And so I thank the Blackfoot of Siksika, Gainai and Bagani, their families, um, and their stories have been here for thousands and, th and thousands of generations. And I think it's so important to acknowledge that and acknowledge the strength and the beauty in that. Um, and I love it when science continues to prove things that we've all believed in and we've all known for thousands of years as Indigenous people. Um, because it's that wake-up call. It's that wake-up call that I think we need. And if, if that comes through a scientific lens, hopefully it doesn't come too late. Uh, but I honor the Blackfoot for being on the front lines of that. I also honor um, the Circe Dene or the Tsutsuna, uh, the beaver people, um, for being on this land. They were the stewards of the river, and this is why they're connected to the beaver, because that's what the beaver is. The beaver is wisdom. The beaver is building. It's building connections. It's building community. But it's also knowing how to work with the river, not... Um, jar it, which unfortunately is what we're doing now with everything in the world. We're trying to force the land to be what we need it to be, but it was already what we needed it to be if we knew how to take care of it. And they show us that with the river, so I'm thankful for the Tsutsuna for doing that. I think the Stony Nakoda from Morley, which includes Chiniki, Bearspaw, and Wesley First Nations, they have been through so much. Uh, they are um, from Lakota, so they've come up through the States, up into Canada um, because of colonization. They were forced up here, and if it wasn't for the Blackfoot giving them safe passage, they wouldn't be here, um, and a lot of their ancestors wouldn't be here, and I'm so thankful for all of their teachings. They teach us of struggle and how we can continue to survive and thrive. They teach us of the connection to the mountains. The mountains when we look at them, they give us messages. They teach us how to stand strong and stand tall and know that, you know, everything is going to ebb and flow. Everything is going to change. But as long as you have that strength and that core and that connection to your ancestors, it doesn't matter where you are in the world, you can come back to your ancestors because they're within you. And this is something that I've learned firsthand from the Stony, and I'm so thankful uh, for the Stony Nakoda for keeping those teachings, for having that strength um, in spite of all of these insurmountable odds and horrible things that have happened, you know, all Indigenous people, we stand up, we step up, and we raise our voices when it's necessary for our future generations and for our community. And so I'm very, very thankful and humbled every time I do that land acknowledgement because I am steeped in it. 
I recognize those relationships. I recognize that past. I recognize our ancestors that have brought us together. But I also understand that responsibility of acknowledging all of those things that have happened to us in our past and all of the teachings that the ancestors have left for us so that we can leave a better world for our future generations because they deserve it. We're borrowing the world from them. And right now we are just destroying it. If we did this, like if you were borrowing a car and you did this to the car, um, darn skippy, you wouldn't be borrowing that car anymore. And so Mother Earth is going to shake us off like fleas if we don't smarten up. Um, but I also wanted to acknowledge Métis Region 3. So this uh, Métis sash uh, was actually gifted to me from um, one of my uh, one of my Blackfoot elders, actually, um, Kelly, and I'm so, so thankful every time I wear it because I, I think of him and I think of, you know, his beautiful wife Daphne who had left us last year, but I can still feel that strength that she has left us with, that wisdom, that gentle kindness, um, and uh, I always get teary when I think of her because I wish I, wish I would have spent more time with her because she was just brilliant. Um, but I honor the path that I'm walking um, as a Cree, Anishinaabe, and Métis person because, um, you know, that's, we're in Métis Region 3, and so that foundation has been laid. Um, and it's really about building those relationships. As a Métis person, you're in between. You're always in between, so you're never uh, quite Indigenous and you're never quite uh, settler. You're always right in between in this really gray area. And so it teaches us really about paying attention to everything that's around us, about walking strong and building those bridges of understanding and that knowledge between all people. Um, and my one of my favorite quotes uh, is actually from... Um, from Louis Riel, who's uh, an incredible Métis leader. And um, I think the gist of it is, uh, my people will sleep for a thousand years, but it will be the artists that bring our spirit back. And I feel that. I feel like Mother Earth is calling for the artists to bring their spirit back, whether it be the storytellers or the medicine keepers, because there's an art in being a medicine, medicine keeper. The singers, the drummers, the ones that are bringing back our traditional regalia and our beating, um, that are creating incredible works of art that are sharing our stories. Those are the ones that are truly built, bringing everyone's spirit back. And so um, I wanted to welcome everyone into the circle with the Cree welcome song now that I've ranted for a while because uh, I think it's always really important to start in a good way and this song always starts me in a good way it always puts me in a good heart space um, and I find on in events or when I'm teaching and I don't start with this song I'm not myself I feel like I haven't called in the ancestors and so I'm really thankful whenever I share this song um, and this is from the Nantahau family from Sturgeon Lake uh, Cree Nation which is on the border of Saskatchewan and Alberta and I honor that family for keeping this song alive because it is such a gift to be able to share this song considering we had to go through so much to keep our traditional songs and stories alive it is just a blessing to be able to share these in a good way and so this is Mia Sin, uh, the Cree welcome song which is a little bit different than most songs so we usually sing songs in rounds of four to honor the four directions of the medicine wheel but this song uh, we actually sing it in rounds of three and that's to keep the circle open and welcoming so everyone completes the circle today because in a circle we're all connected. There's no beginning, there's no end, no one is greater or less than anyone else in the circle, just like in the hoop of life. So it teaches us to honor each other for those difference, different differences, <laughs> um, because that's truly what makes our community resilient. You know, if we only were farmers, of course nothing would ever get done. We wouldn't have, you know, incredible artists, we wouldn't have incredible um, scientists, and we wouldn't have knowledge keepers, and we wouldn't have, you know, drummers and singers, and we wouldn't have, you know, writers, and we wouldn't have phenomenal, um, you know, architects, and um, you just think of the world that we live in, and how many people contributed to that, and really how humbling that is recognizing each person as part of our circle. It is so humbling and it helps us to live better in a good way. And so that's truly what this song honors and represents everyone in that circle because even without one of those people, the whole circle would fall apart. And we're really starting to notice that as Indigenous people are getting taken off the land, as in Indigenous women and girls and men are going missing um, or being murdered. There's a void that's left behind and other people have to step into those roles. And so it's important to acknowledge everyone in that circle. And so I'm very humbled when I sing this song because I think of everyone, um, you know, our past, our present, and our future. And so this is Miasin, the Cree welcome song. And I am going to step up and squish my thing out of the way. Mm. 
Mi hacen, mi hacen, hace mi na, hace mi na, epleta cote, been charged up uh, just with the amount of stuff that's been happening um, just across the world and I think it's so so important that we come together and we talk about all of the issues and recognize it's it's not um, like an oppression Olympics everyone has been screwed over by their respective governments in the same way so we need to come together to actually defend what matters which is our future generation which is our earth which is our very survival and so this is why it's incredibly important to just put our differences aside and deal with the tasks at hand um because nothing's gonna get done otherwise so mm. i wanted to share the creator song and so um, this song, I'm always so humbled when I share it. Uh, this song teaches us about, you know, the sacred breath that's all around us and the sacred breath of creation that we all share. So when we take that deep breath in, it always feels better to be in our body, to actually feel that breath within us. Um, because it reminds us that's the same breath that we've shared with our ancestors for thousands and thousands of years. It reminds us of the relationship that we have with, tree, with the tree because when we exhale, it inhales and vice versa. So it teaches us about that reciprocal relationship that we have with nature, with everything around us, um, where all of those plants and those animals, they have different things that they can teach us, but they share that sacred breath with us. And so this is why we need to honor it. Um, and this song... I always say songs come to you when they're when they need to um, and this particular song was actually shared with me from uh, my friend Night Sun um, I sung on one of her songs uh, for an album and um, it was amazing it was so powerful and then she decided to gift me this song afterwards and when she sang it I felt like I already knew it um, and so it was so fast and easy for me to learn and then as soon as I did I ran it over to my great great aunt um, and she is an extended care, so um, she gets bored. So I get to go drum and sing with her. And all of the old people are always look, like, looking over and like, what's going on over there? <laughs> but um, I was singing and drumming this song, and she was singing with me. And I was like, Auntie, how do you know this song? And she said, how do you know this song? This is our family song. I haven't heard this in years. Where did you find it? Um, and so it teaches us that you know, everything happens for a reason, and those things were meant to come back to our nation. Some of our teachings have left our nation for a long time, but they're starting to come back 
into all of our um, all of our hearts, all of our minds, all of our teachings. That acknowledging the acknowledgement of things like the honorable harvest of never taking more than what you need, always leaving the first thing that you see because you don't know if it's going to be the last, and never taking more than your share. Um, if you see, uh, like I just went sage picking, which was amazing, and I can't wait to do it a few more times this year because. I always need sage. I'm always out of sage. Um, but it teaches us that if you see a patch, you don't take the whole thing. You take maybe a quarter, maybe a third. But you don't know if somebody's going to come and need some more. And so you always leave that behind. Uh, and even that's anything, anything on the land, you always leave a bit behind so that you can nurture the earth. You always give something back before you take anything from the earth. You always have to start by giving not just taking and taking and taking. And that's that's what protocol is, is you always start by giving something and saying thank you and being grateful before you ask for anything in return. And so, um, yeah, I'm just very, very thankful and humbled for this song every time I sing it. Um, and I really think of my friend and all of her beautiful babies. So <laughs> this, uh, and I have her cat. <laughs> that's another thing, and I have her cat. Um, and I'm very, very thankful. Uh, her cat is not the one that got hurt by the bobcat last week, but uh, her cat is uh, the uh, humor. He's definitely the comedy relief in the house and very snuggly. So this is um, the creator song to remind us of that sacred breath that we all share, to remind us that we are all part of creation. We're not above it or below it. We're part of that circle. And it's important to remember that. songs just want to stay. Hmm. But I think I'm going to share the Jeremy, Cherokee morning song, um, which is, um, of course, a Cherokee song. It's from down south. 
but uh, I learned it as the four winds song. And so it teaches us how those four winds, those four directions, they all connect and they all come back to each other. They need each other. Just like all four directions of the medicine wheel, we have that balance of all of the elements. So we have fire that balances with water. We have air that balances with the earth. Um, we have that masculine energy that balances with the feminine energy. And it teaches us we're a balance of both. And this is why two spirit people were so important in our nations because they were, they were that outward balance of both. So they would carry both that male and female, um, those teachings and those ceremonies. And whenever somebody would fall ill, they would be able to step into those roles. So they would have to learn all of those roles. So they would um, be multidisciplinary. <laughs> but um, this is probably why we're seeing a lot more two-spirit people come into the world because we need to bring back that balance in the world. And so this is why it's such a gift whenever we have a two-spirit person in our lives. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm very humbled and I'm thankful to be um, a two-spirit knowledge keeper, to be able to share those things. I don't like the word keeper. I don't like keep it. I share it a lot. <laughs> so, knowledge sharer. Um, but yeah, this song, it, when I learned it, it just made sense that it was about honoring all those four winds and those four directions and the way that we travel and the way that our ancestors have traveled. Um, here in, in Turtle Island, so North, uh, North America, South America, there used to be huge, um, like amazing trade routes. And this is why um, a few years ago, there was actually a medicine bundle that was opened in Nunavut. And in it, there were seeds from um, Peru, there were seeds from Brazil that you could only find in those countries. There, there were uh, different kinds of like fossilized and dried barks and medicines from Central America and also some from Siberia. So these, this is something that we've been doing for a really long time. We've been traveling, we've been trading. We forget about that movement piece, but we also forget about, you know, that importance of trading with each other, not just trading with companies who don't know who we are, but trading with each other, because that's truly where we see such beauty and appreciation. We appreciate those things when we know where they've come from. I know that um, I need to order some eggs, but I appreciate the eggs that I get because I know the woman who um, who has the farm and how she loves her chicken so much and how passionate her and her family are about that. And they taste so much better. It is so much better because I know that my, uh, you know, money is actually going to a family and it's supporting that family. And it's not just a company who like CEO wants a new house or something. So really think more local because that's what we used to do. And if we couldn't find it locally, we'd travel. So um, this is the uh, the Four Winds song, the Four Directions song, also known as Wendayaho, the Cherokee morning song. Makes sense because as soon as the sun rises in the morning, it continues to travel those four directions. Um, and this was originally done by Robbie Roberts and Ulali. Ulali, look them up on YouTube. They're incredible. Um, their harmonies are just sick, just incredible. So this is the Cherokee Morning Song. One day out.
Um, I'm going to share some healing song because I think we all need a little healing. Really, um, I want to pray for the healing of, um, you know, of our forests, of our trees. Our trees are sick. All of our trees are very, very sick. I had a beautiful walk yesterday um, with an older gentleman and he's very intuitive, but um, he was showing me just how sick the trees are. And it's true, the trees in the city have always been kind of detached and sick and missing that spirit because we don't show them appreciation. We don't say, hey, thank you for breathing air with me. Thank you for this relationship that we share. Uh, we don't give them tobacco like we used to. Um, I mean, I've given my trees tobacco and they're thriving, which is amazing. Um, but it's honoring the relationship. I say, thank you for shading my home. Or with my cedar trees, I say, thank you for providing medicine. Or thank you for breathing my beautiful air with me. Or thank you for providing, you know, shelter for the birds that are, you know, <laughs> creating hours of entertainment for the cats. So it's those little things. And I think we forget. We forget to be grateful for these things that we see every day. Just like we forget to be thankful for the people that we see every day. And we really need to heal those relationships. The relationship to Mother Earth. The relationship with each other. Um, the relationships between the plants and the animals. Um, but... Also, like, the relationship between us and the earth, we forget about how much we need to appreciate her and show gratitude and give something back. And gratitude is a gift, you know? Um, being able to sing a song or drum or put your hands on the earth and just say thank you, that's a huge gift. Just like if you, uh, you know, sometimes teachers get taken for, uh, taken for granted and when they hear the word thank you, it is it's like life. <laughs> so remember to just say thank you. I think that's, that's one of the hugest takeaway from um, what I'm trying to share. And I'm thankful for water. It's been very smoky, so my throat has been really, it's very, very sore. So I'm not saying 100%, but look at that. Oh. So um, I'm thankful for my, my drum and for the beautiful um, every time I do this, it's just saying thank you to my drum, saying thank you to my drumstick when I hold it. I always do before I even start anything. When I pull it out of the bag, I say thank you. Thank you for being part of my life. Um, <laughs> and they're not just inanimate objects. They are spirit. You know, think of things, everything with a spirit. And if that spirit's not, ser <laughs> spirit's not serving you anymore, pass it on to someone who, whose spirit it will serve. And so, that's why. This is the healing song for all of our healing. every time I sing that song and it's beautiful um I don't know the next song that I wanted to share um is the ancestral bird song so this is one of the songs that I carry um it came through me while I was at um the weasel head along with weasel head and well it's a park now but before it just used to be <laughs> you know it used to be part of Sutsuna and 
Um, it carries so much teachings. There's so many beautiful plants and birds and bugs and um, I have a thing, I don't know what's going on with me and bees lately, but bees like for the last five years have just been like hitting me in the face, <laughs> not stinging me, <laughs> climbing on me, crawling on me, trying to get in my shoes, going up my skirt, staying warm, going for a little bit of a ride and then going down. <laughs> so I don't know what's going on. Um, <laughs> when I'm driving, sometimes they come in the window, they just like hang out for a bit and then they leave. One got stuck in my hair until I stopped the car and then he got out. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's strange. Like the fire medicine is very, very strong. Uh, but I'm really thinking of just the voice. Um, so this was the ancestral bird song because you can hear the voices of the birds and they tell us so much. They teach us not only how to communicate with each other, how to talk to each other, how to just listen and be mindful and be present, but they also teach us like that it's okay to have your own voice, but to recognize that your voice is part of a bigger whole. And that's truly what this song honors. It was, it was the voices of the weasel head. It was the voices of um, those ancestors speaking through those birds because there's that where that wisdom comes from. And so, yeah, this is the ancestral bird song.
I'm actually going to share another song. Um, this, I have a lot of bird songs. I was really recognizing and realizing this. And it's almost like the birds always have so much to talk about. So, And uh, their voices are very clear and crisp and precise. Uh, I did share an article on... Um, how the birds listen to each other, they actually shut down that active part of their brain for um, speech so that they can actually um, listen and be present and um, be receptive, which is really incredible. Why can't we do that? I think we need to be able to do that. I think our world would be a better place if we actually listened to each other a lot more. Um, but this song is a chickadee song. And normally I do it as a call and response, um, especially when I'm working with youth or when I'm teaching people songs, because there's something really powerful um, about singing together, about raising our voices together, when we're drumming together too, that's just really, really beautiful. There's such a joy in it and such connection um, that it's just such a fun process as well. So I'm really, really thankful to be able to share this um, with you know, pre-K all the way up through um, elders. Elders love this song too, and university students, absolutely. It's fun, it's really fun. I think it's fun to sing together. Um, but instead of doing it as a call and response, like I normally would traditionally teach it, um, I'm actually just going to sing it all the way through. And um, so this is the Chickadee song, and the Chickadee teaches us about listening. It teaches us we have two ears and one mouth for one <laughs> for a reason, um, but also, to just be open to hear those messages that Creator sends us. Because the chickadee knows that, you know, it has to be open to listen or else it's going to get eaten by a cat. So, <laughs> this is the chickadee song.
the I Love You song is in my head. Um, this is Kitsi Kakuman. This is the only Blackfoot song I know. Um, it's funny how certain songs will just stick with you and others, no matter how many times you've heard them or they try to be taught to you, they just don't, don't stick. Um, but this song always did. And so I wanted to thank um, my friend Sandra for sharing this song with me, my friend Stephanie for sharing this song with me. Um, we sing it for their family members and I, I sing it to really honor them and um, all that they've been through and just how they have such enormous strength and I just love that about them um, and I love them they're just amazing I got my sisters from another mother because <laughs> they do they feel like sisters they feel like family so this song <clears throat> um, is I think it was originally brought forward by um, Olivia Tail Feathers and so I believe she can be found I don't know, I actually haven't jumped into that YouTube rabbit hole. I should probably do that because she's amazing. But um, yeah, Olivia Tailfeathers, look her up. And so this is Kitsi Gogglemen, and uh, it means I love you and I appreciate you. And I'm going to sing it um, to Mother Earth, which is Na'a. I'm going to sing it to um, uh, the uh, Mokinstis, which is where I live. Uh, I'm also going to sing it to Ogoy, which is our water, and then I'm also going to sing it to Brazil because um, I want to show uh, our, our family members in Brazil, you know, we're all family, we're all related, but um, that they're not alone, that we are here with them. And so this is uh, It's a Compliment, the I Love You song. Normally, again, I, I sing it as a common response, but I'm going to sing it all the way through. <laughs> going to be uh, creating an event uh, in uh, pretty quick <laughs> but uh, during uh, it's going to be on the 9th uh, probably uh, in the evening so it won't interrupt people's work but um, it's basically an event to stand in solidarity so wherever you are you can do it online you can do it um, you know in I'm gonna probably do it at City Hall because I tend to do everything at City Hall because there's um, yeah it's a good amplification space to really address colonization at its source. Um, but also uh, we have right now at City Hall, there's an incredible display of all of those children's shoes. So um, if you wanted to come down and build, uh, make an offering, this is in Calgary, sorry, I should have should have said that, uh, but I'll probably be doing an event. Um, I'm aiming for six on the 9th, so that's the Monday. Um, and so the, the whole point of this is just there's 
so much happening right now with um, Indigenous rights in Brazil, and it's going to affect us. You, if, if you think it's not going to affect you, it is going to affect you. It's to recognize that if this legislation is passed abol like abolishing the rights of Indigenous people to make way for industry and to make way for um, just destroying Mother Earth, this it's going to be landmark. It's not just going to be in Brazil. It's going to be coming here to Canada because we are the first line of defense and we're the reason that not everything is gone yet. It's going to be happening, you know, in um, New Zealand. They're going to push this legislation on everybody Indigenous who is standing on the front lines of protecting Mother Earth. Not just Indigenous, on anyone who is standing in the front lines protecting Mother Earth. Protecting our children's future. So, um, I, we need to do this. We need to do this together. Um, for all of our generations, for everyone who is on this planet, for everyone who is vulnerable and doesn't have a voice, we need to be that voice. And this is so important that we do this. Um, and so to, um, they want us to do some uh, motions to remember this, to say, we are with you. We are with you. Because we are with all Indigenous people. We are with the people of Brazil. We are watching. We are watching. We bear witness to everything that happens and is happening throughout the world. We bear witness to all of the injustices that Indigenous people have faced, but also the injustices that are happening to Mother Earth and all of our relations that do not have a voice for themselves. And hi hi. Ho ho. And this is a, a gesture of thank you in Brazil, saying thank you. Thank you for standing up for Mother Earth. All of the Indigenous people on the front lines, all of settlers who know better and who are trying to make the world better, everyone who is an ally, everyone who has a voice, who wants to elevate each other, this is important. And so remember, we are with you. We are watching. Hi, hi. Thank you. Miigwech, everyone. Um, that being said, I'm going to share a couple more songs. Um, I'm going to share the water song. I know, I believe I shared it last week, but it's important. We need water right now more than anything in different places. Um, so in BC and Ontario and parts of Manitoba and parts of Alberta, everything is on fire right now. And so we need the rain. We need the fire. We need to honor the relationship and how precious water is because we don't really see it unless we don't have it and we will die without three days of water we will die and so this is why we have to um, honor and appreciate water and the relationship that we have with water and so this is the water song um my cousin hears the river in the song um and then rapids because she likes to you know sit in her canoe um and then of course the waterfall my other cousin who's in bc uh, she always hears the ocean she's just so drawn to the ocean so you can hear the ocean rocking back and forth and then the waves crashing. And then of course I hear the rain. I hear the rain coming down and then the thunder and the lightning. So I'm hoping to send the rain and to send the clean water and to send, um, you know, those waves of um, kindness, of reciprocation, of compassion that we need for each other and for Mother Earth. So this is the water song. Um, I believe the Otaminkwe singers actually have a version of this on YouTube. So if you want to learn a different version you can um, but this is um, this is the water song I'm gonna try not to go as fast as I usually do we should Wish 
Wishita do ya do ya day. Wishita do ya do ya do ya. Wishita do ya do ya day. Wishita do ya do ya do ya. Wishita do ya do ya day. Wishita do ya do ya do ya. Wishita do ya do ya day. Wishat me ya hey ya hey ya. So this is my stick <laughs> before, after the water song. So it's quite devastated. Um, uh, I'm going to share, of course, the traveling song or the going home song as a way to close out and um, hope that your path this week is uh, beautiful. It's filled with joy. It's filled with learning. Not too hard learnings, um, but that all paths lead to good things. And sometimes we forget that sometimes those really bad experiences lead to really good things. And so I had kind of a crummy experience because usually I'm on my game when I'm teaching and I was totally off my game when I was teaching, um, which led uh, an event to being canceled for me, which in hindsight, I was really like stressed about it because I'm not like that, but then it needed to happen because if it didn't get canceled, if I was there teaching, I wouldn't be here next week doing the events that I need to do to honor um, Indigenous Peoples Day, to honor um, you know our brothers and sisters in Brazil. So even though we have those moments where we stumble, sometimes it's for a reason. Sometimes it's so that we can learn and we can look back and we can be stronger and better um, and recognize you know we're not perfect and it's important. You know sometimes I forget that because I try very, very hard uh, for, well, not perfection, because I know, you know, there's no such thing as perfection. This is why our heart's on the left hand side, because creator is made perfect. Um, but to really humble ourselves. And there's certain things that I know that I wasn't humble about. And so that really did humble me. And I'm very, very thankful for that teaching and that learning. And I'm thankful for that opportunity. I thought it was an opportunity that passed me, but I recognize it was actually an opportunity that pushed me. And that's a beautiful thing. Um, and so this is really about acknowledging that path. And sometimes it's not a clean, straight, linear line. Sometimes life is messy. And it's a beautiful thing because that's what teaches us, you know, how to be strong and how to adapt and, you know, how to really appreciate the good things as they come and, um, you know, strive to be better. And uh, this also reminds us that all paths lead back to home. And home is where you make it. Home is where you create it. Home is in your core of the ancestors and the people who have taught you along your path. Um, you know, your knowledge keepers, but also path back to yourself. 
because uh, sometimes you need to just be with yourself and create that sense of community and well-being within you before you can share that with the world. And um, this also teaches us that home is where you make it, you know, and I have, you know, friends that are family members to me, and that's beautiful. That's a beautiful thing. And so this is truly what this song is all about. It's about creating that path and creating that life and appreciating all of those things and all of those people. And um, yeah, this is the traveling song to wish everyone a wonderful week. Thank you so much again for joining me for Tuesday teachings. Uh, I know we did start a little bit late, but that's okay because most people just like watch it on archive anyway, so it's all good. So <laughs> this is the traveling song from um, Sharon Fu Turner, who is my elder who shared it with me originally. And then I always acknowledge my friends Yolanda and Ashley who brought it back. So hi, hi. description for um, the page to show your support uh, for the frontline uh, indigenous people working to <laughs> save all of our rights around the world um, in the link so please do show your support whether that be um, you know just you know showing up and making a video uh, whether it be just a few lines of support in your social media whether it be just tagging things with hashtags or whether it be showing up um, and uh, I'll be creating an event here in Calgary, but I'm going to put a call out to any uh, activists across Turtle Island if you want to put together an event and we can do them at the same time. I think that would be really, really brilliant. Um, yes, and also it would be good just to know that we're not alone. I think that's the most beautiful thing is to know that we're not alone in this um, and that we really all do have the best interests of our future generations at heart. And... Um, you know, we know that and we recognize that um, as Indigenous people, we have that direct connection to Mother Earth and we have seen this coming before. We've seen this before. There's so many prophecies of this time from so many First Nations um, and Indigenous people around the world. So let's take heed and let's work together and let's save our future generations. Hi, hi, everyone. Miigwech. And I will see you next week if I don't see you on Monday for... National Indigenous People or International Indigenous People's Day. Hi, hi, Miigwech, and see you soon.